stood up uh, against the Palmer and all his uh, <coughs> black woman who, uh, had a whole I read a whole story of her mm -hmm. of her thoughts and, and uh, aspirations and uh, <clears throat> she was a very well educated <coughs> person. You know. Where did you read about her? Um, someone sent an email okay. and talking. Yeah, I just didn't want to talk about the same thing. Okay. okay so I just wanted to know the subject. Are we ready to start? Do you put that up? Do you need help? Oh, uh, no. Okay. I didn't go back to the very end where I had to log out. Oh, okay. Just wait for it to pop up. Are you waiting for me or am I waiting for you? Are we, are, you wait, are, we, are we waiting for marching or are we ready to go? I'm in the chat room. Yeah. Okay, there's no okay. rush. I just want to know where I am. That's okay. Fine. We're waiting for a shout from you. Okay. Shout! Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. I um, just want to spend a few minutes talking about the political scene to you. Uh, I understand that June gave a testimony about um, a black woman who stood up to Obama. The, um, um, actually, I wasn't going to talk about it from that, the po political situation from that point of view, but I will say that I think it was Bill O'Reilly, and it was on Fox News last night. I'm sorry, I don't remember which program that it was. They ran a, what they would call a montage. It was just like a series of black people, one after the other, saying why they have rejected the NAACP and acknowledging that the, um, so this really isn't about Obama, although Obama, the, the NAACP today is an arm of Obama. When the NAACP was first founded, you know, I think two of the three founding fathers were white people, uh, people who, you know, believed in equality and, and that you should be judged upon who you are, not upon the color of your skin. And the NAACP was a, a, an important and powerful force of working for righteousness in this particular area of race. But one thing we all have to learn when we grow up, and that is that organizations and people can change from the inside. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue to look at a person that you've known for years who now has turned into a murderer and not face the fact that they're a murderer. I mean, you can, but to your destruction. And in the same manner, if an organization changes its policies and its motives, we have to stand up and reject, at least I'm not telling you what you have to do, but this is, this is what I have to do, and I think this is what any responsible person has to do, to stand up and acknowledge that that organization is no longer what it was, that political party of the Democrats is no longer what it was, Dick Morris said yesterday, I think he's usually on, on Hannity, Dick Morris, and he said, yes, he used to be a conservative Democrat, but there are, the, the, the conservative Democrat no longer exists. There is no such thing as a conservative Democrat. The Democratic Party has become a radical party, so he became a Republican. He had no choice. Brethren, we have to be able to move. If we can't move, we're going to get run over. Okay, you cannot be rigid in life because you'll be knocked down and possibly hurt or really destroyed. So one of the programs on Fox News last night had a montage, just black person after black person, people of substance. Uh, uh, and we shouldn't even say in the black community, people of substance, okay, in this country, saying that they no longer give credence or support the NAACP because it has become the, a radical organization and it's communist at its root. So we look around, brethren, we are, we, the country is about to be taken over by communists. And a lot of, uh, a lot of people, a lot of our citizens simply cannot believe it and are in denial and reject the idea that they, they, or they just don't know what's going on. It's absolutely amazing. Of course, the press is complicit. The press has gone over. Actually, Chris Matthews, I couldn't believe they, they're bold. They become bold. They're not even hiding anymore. Chris Matthews 
actually said something to the effect of um, his mind, his, well, some confusion in his mind, so whenever he gets confused, he has to go back to Saul Alinsky to straighten his brain out. Saul Alinsky is the radical, the 1960s radical, whose book, uh, the, all of the, the present communist organizations go to, is their Bible. And he actually said that Chris Matthews, you know, an, an interviewer on a major, uh, on a major TV station, saying actually having no problem saying he was a subscriber to Saul Alinsky, who preaches the violent overthrow of the government. They're poised to destroy us. You know what comes to mind right now in the alternate translation of the Old Testament? Somewhere in there. I remember, uh, I think I went, well, anyway, somewhere in there. The alternate translation was, and Satan stood poised with the needle in her hand, something like that. And the meaning of it was, again, that we are a spiritual woven garment. And that Satan is the warp threads. And God is supposed to be the warp threads, or God's agent. And this hour of the Lord Jesus is supposed to be God's warp, thre well, warp threads. But in the fallen man, the, the serpent's household is both warp and woof. So the context of this alternate translation was with regard to Israel, because when we become Israel, uh, God becomes the woof threads of our garment. Okay, he, he gets our sin nature under control, pushes it into its warp position, and God becomes uh, the woof threads of our garment. So Satan, at ready, poised to, to destroy Israel, I think it was Samson, actually, that was the translation, and Satan stood there poised with the needle, in other words, to, to weave herself through this garment called Samson and make him make herself both warp and woof in him. And that's what I see in the spirit. It's everywhere. They're everywhere. And a large percentage of the population are just in complete unbelief and denial. Bill O'Reilly is completely, completely um, out, of, out of the loop. He just, he cannot face it. He's not, a, he's not a stupid man, Bill O'Reilly. He's a very smart man. He can't get it. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Because he can't get it. A part of him is refusing to see what's happening. And when, when I first came to the Lord, which was about 30 years ago, 30-ish years ago, I didn't know which end was up. But I had, Christ was awakened in me. I had an active Christ in me before my personality uh, was, was, was educated enough to work with him. You see, Christ can awaken in us, but it's our personality that must be educated to cooperate with him and to choose him or became, or he won't be able to get much done. You may recall years ago I was preaching, both Cain and Abel must be educated. So in those days I was having a recurring dream of these, uh, the dream, I knew it was the church, and it looked to me like a, it was, on, it was, it was a resort, it was a resort. It looked to me like a Riviera type resort, or they have beaches like that in Puerto Rico too. Maybe, maybe in Florida, I've never been, I hear they have beaches like that in Florida, but whatever, a resort type beach with that beautiful sand. And uh, I saw this view, and I saw the tables, and the umbrellas, and the people sitting there drinking their pina coladas, you know, whatever they were doing. And then I could see out into the ocean. And there was this big fence. It was a cyclone, a cyclone fence. You all know what a cyclone fence is. It's a, a cyclone fence. It's a metal fence um, made up of, of woven pieces of metal so that you have big holes in it like that. You have the, I'm sure you've seen it, you just didn't know the name. So there was a cyclone fence and it was in the water. Like you all may know that uh, the, the waters, I think it's 10 miles out from the shore, but that, those waters belong to the nation, whatever nation the, that shoreline is. And beyond the 10 mile mark, it's international waters. So this, this, this fence, it was like marking off the international waters. And it went down deep, deep into the, into the ocean bed. And these, Criminals. They were. They were human. They were sort of 
cartoonized, but they, they were obviously human. They were getting off ships. Did you ever see uh, movies of um, of the invasion of, um, of of France at the end of World War II? How the Allies had ships and the, the boats only went so far, and then the men had to jump into the water. Okay, they were coming on ships and jumping off the ship, and they were. It was almost funny. They would hold their nose and dive and go down really deep and come up on the other side of the fence. And they, they were seals or whatever you, want, whatever you want to call them. And then they would run onto the shores. And all of the believers, and I knew it was the church, they were just sitting there chatting and having a good time. And nobody saw them. And these <laughs> invaders, they were running on the whole patio and doing whatever they were doing. And they were looking to see. And then they recognized that. Nobody saw them. And then they just went into their business. Now, I didn't know what it meant. And I think if I didn't know what it meant, I don't really know that there was anything I could have done. I think the reason I was getting those dreams was that Christ in me was awakened, and the, the Lord Jesus, or heaven, or whatever you want, want to say, uh, was, was communicating with Christ in me, telling him that the invasion was near. So Christ in me knew, but Sheila, the personality, didn't know. Now, it's, it, the, what I really want to talk to you about is, is Glenn Beck. Did anybody see the 5 o'clock show, Glenn Beck's 5 o'clock show yesterday? It was absolutely amazing. You know, uh, he, Saul Alinsky, this man who wrote this book called Rules for Radicals, that tells revolutionaries how to overthrow an existing government. Okay, and, and, and if you read the book, it's happening now. It's exactly what's going on. They're overwhelming our nation with debt. The president and the radicals in the Democratic Party, a lot of them know exactly what they're doing. Some of them are just going for the right because they're selfish and they're concerned about their political skins. You know, but at least, the, at least there's a core of people in power that know exactly what they're doing. Okay, so this is who Saul Alinsky is. It's his ideas that are that are that are um, empowering or energizing all of these radical communist groups and brethren. There's a lot of them, and they're focused. They're focused. You know, you can have a big army and be defeated. That's what happened in Vietnam. In North Vietnam, had a small focused army. They were fighting for the life of their country. Now, uh, Ho Chi Minh was a communist, was a communist at the time, and is a communist now. I mean, at, at, and America was in the war saying, well, we want to stop communism wherever it's cropping up. Ha, 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 what a joke. It's come up right in the midst of us. But at the time, my point is, and I'm, I'm really don't have enough knowledge to even pass a judgment on this. I'm just giving you the facts as I understand them. Ho Chi Minh was the leader of North Vietnam, a, a country that was steeped in poverty, people starving to death, uh, serious, serious problems. And he believed that communism would help his people. I saw the man interviewed. I, I tended to believe him. Maybe I'm naive. I don't know. But that's, that's what I saw. I'm telling you openly. I'm no expert on this. <clears throat> and that small group of North Vietnamese drove out the French and they drove out the Americans because they were committed, they were absolutely committed and believed that they were fighting for the life of their country. Now only God knows what would have happened if, if the United States would have defeated them and we would have tried to bring democracy in there. I, I don't know. But this group of people believed that they had to defeat us to survive as a nation. And they defeated. It was, there used to be a movie. Years ago, there was a movie called The Mouse That Roared. I'm, I'm too old. You know, none of you even remember that movie. Oh, boy, I'm showing my age. The Mouse That Roared. Yeah. And it was a comedy. Some little unknown nation declared war on the United States of America. And the United States was, what, are you kidding? You know? I, I used to have a German Shepherd dog, and I had a friend who had a little toy poodle that could walk under my dog's belly. 
and that little toy poodle tormented my dog. <laughs> Absolutely tormented my dog. That, that poodle didn't know it was half the size or a quarter of the size of my dog. Hadn't figured that out yet. <laughs> so, anyway, what I, what, what I want, what, what Glenn did last night was a absolutely um, uh, amazing. It, and at the, he, at the beginning of, the, of Saul Alinsky's book is his dedication to Lucifer. Saul Alinsky's dedication, dedicating the book to Lucifer, exalting him. Exalting Lucifer. Now, do you know there's a Lucis trust do you know that the term Lucifer is all through the United Nations? There are book publishers. The, the people can't, don't get it. They think like it's a joke, you know? But what Glenn said last night, he said, am I the only one that's seeing this? This man is serving Lucifer. And all of these people following his instructions and his plan I'm paraphrasing, are serving Lucifer. Don't you get it? It's a spiritual war. And then he quoted the Pope. I really think the only reason he quoted the Pope is he's trying to, to not cut himself off from other people who won't listen to him because he's a Mormon. He's not denominational. He's just saying, pray to God as you know him. And he actually made an announcement that, well, he said Lucifer, you know, Lucifer is the fallen Adam. So, well, well, that's not wrong, you know. Uh, Lucifer, Satan, whatever, they're all, they're all working together, are about to try and take over, take over our country and, and wipe out. Well, he didn't say what they're going to do, but just use your brain, because if they come into power, they will wipe out all freedom of religion, in particular Christians and Jews. Why? Because these are the vessels in which Christ might rise. There would be, if they, if they ever succeed, there would be mass murders of Christians and Jews. And our religion would be, would be outlawed. Not that we're religious, but you all know what I mean. That was what he actually said on TV last night. Saying, am I the only one that sees this? And I'll tell you something, the answer is this. He probably is the only one who sees it, except for a few like us. Because before you could believe that Lucifer has really raised up a human army to wipe out the nation that is mo in, in which Christ is manifesting himself most prominently today. Of course, he's in other nations, and other people in other nations. But if you want to take it uh, as a nation, the evangelism that's gone forth from here is, is unmatched. We, I, don't, I think we even exceeded Great Britain in our evangelism. The only ones that could see this are people who have a spiritual understanding of God. And what I mean by that is that the church is filled with philosophical Christians today that don't believe in the conflict between good and evil. They go to churches that, t that talk about what they have to do to get blessed. And not, is there anything wrong with that? How to solve their problems? No. The church is in an intense state of narcissism, brethren. They think that Christ is all about them. And some people here have thought that too. Every once in a while I have to wake you up. We are his army because there's a spiritual war that's going on uh, with, between negative forces that want to, to take over the world, including and of course, humanity is the world. This is what Satan offered Jesus. Satan said, let, let me in. No, he saw Jesus was going to stand up in power. He said, let me live through you. Don't, don't submit to the living God. Get rid of Elijah, get rid of him. Let me be your inner man. And I'll give you everything without righteousness. You can have it all. You can have power, you can have women. You can uh, do anything you want. No, you don't have to be holy. And I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. That means I'll give you dominion over every human being in the world. 
and you can possess them and do anything you want with them. So we've got a country, if not a world, but I'm dealing, dealing with America right now, we've got a country that doesn't even believe this. They don't believe in the spirituality of the church. If they do believe in a devil, they don't, well, they don't, if they do believe in a devil, they don't perceive him as manifesting in men, in human beings. They don't perceive Satan as appearing through a company of human beings that want to dominate and crush and control you, me. I mean, they don't see it, uh, that, that Satan is manifesting through men who want to control you. They think he's in the hereafter, if they go to hell, or who knows what they think, because the truth is not being taught. And when the truth is not taught, people's imaginations fill in the blanks. Who knows what they believe? Hell and death and, and Satan and all that, it's after you die. I'm a good person, so I don't have to worry about that. And Glenn came right out and said it last night. The time is very short, brother. The time is very, very short. And it's amazing that it has to be a Mormon that's sounding the alarm. Where is the church? God bless you. Sleeping. Sleeping. Completely overtaken. God bless you. God bless you. So where are the preachers that have the money to be on TV? Where's Creflo Dollar? Where's Fred Price? Especially the black preachers, because it's the black Christians that are being, and the black community that are being used in this vicious way. Where are the, where are the I mean, I don't have the money in, to go on TV. Where's Joyce Meyer? Fred mm -hmm. Price, Creflo Dollar, uh, John Stanley. Where are the preachers that have the money to, to com communicate with the public, where are they? They don't have a clue. They believe in the rapture. And they're turning over the rest of the world. <laughs> See ya. I was listening to WLIX on the radio yesterday. I almost couldn't bear it. I, I don't know who this man is. I think, I'm not sure who he is. So I won't say. He, he's either in New Jersey or out on Long Island. And he's preaching on the book of Revelation. And uh, right. oh, somebody didn't, somebody forgot to turn off the, no. okay. Could you please go inside and do it? Just hang up one of the, on one of the phones and dial in again. Why is the same Thank you. And he, he was, he was preaching on, um, on the, on the judgments of the book of Revelation. And it is the theme of his message. He just kept repeating it over and over again. How all these people that rejected Jesus, how they're going to hell and God's coming, Jesus is coming for his church and all of you bad people out there, although he didn't use that word, all of you bad people that reject, that's the crime. This is the crime that is going to turn you over to Antichrist and eternal torment. You rejected Jesus. It's horrendous. How could they reject him? They, aside from the fact that God would never put you in eternal torment for rejecting him, how could they reject Jesus? They don't even know who he is. The true message is not even out there. The true message, they don't even know the true message. But even if they did know the true message, if they, if they rejected him anyway, it doesn't matter. He'll take them if he wants to. He'll have mercy on whoever he wants to have mercy on. Because the bottom line is his plan. And it's not because we're cute or because of the color of our eyes or because of the color of our skin. The reason we're so important that Almighty God wants to save us. Does anybody know why we're so important? Probably not. The reason was, did you have an answer? Because of his son. Well, beyond that, the reason he wants to save us is because we are a part of him. We are his body. We are his body. Yeah. 
So the church has made itself very important. We are his body. Now he loves us and he wants to bless us, but the primary reason he's saving us is because we're a part of him and he needs his body. If I lost my arm, I would need my arm. If I lost my head, I would need my head. He needs his body to be who God wants him to be and to do what God wants him to do. He needs his body. And we, the personalities that exist today, we are, I'm going to, to talk about humanity in general, I'm hoping the change will begin with us, we are temporary formations. Uh, we are, the personality is a temporary formation of an aspect of soul that's a part of the vessel that this spiritual man will, will inhabit. And the part of us that's not temporary is, exists in the unconscious and the subconscious part of our mind. So what's, what's being, they're, they're, we're being saved on multiple levels. The nefesh, the soul, that's the life, that's the, fle and the, fle the f life of the flesh that's in the blood, that's been around since before the fall. That's the true vessel that came into existence from the, the light of the ears, the nose, and the mouth that congealed in front of Adam Kamon's mouth. The vessels formed to contain the Son of God, which is the light that's designated to enter into and dwell in those vessels. That, that those vessels fell all the way down to this world and we are their materialization in this world. That's the nefesh and the, the nefesh and the ruach of, of the physical body, the blood and the oxygen in the blood. And that's primordial. I'm gonna say it again, those elements are primordial and they exist in our subconscious and unconscious, or well, they exist as our subconscious and unconscious. Every that that those ve that vessel or those vessels, okay, those vessels. Originally, there was one vessel which spread out into many vessels. So I'm going to say that vessel. I'm going back to its inception. That vessel, okay, that initial vessel. <sighs> Sorry, I lost my thought. That initial vessel has fallen down to this world and is materializing as us. And that vessel does not have the strength to, to, to uh, appear in this world continually. In order, for it, in order for that spiritual vessel to appear in this world, it has to be born as a man or born as men. And part of the birth process produces the personality. And the generating force, which is the serpent at its root, mm -hmm. doesn't have the spiritual strength to keep us in existence indefinitely. Or well, continually, the word is continually. That's what uh, eternal means, continually, <clears throat> unending. So the vessels that the serpent was in the unconscious plane forms only last for a season, and that's why we die. We're not supposed to die. God doesn't want us to die. Jesus doesn't want us to die. The serpent doesn't want us to die. So it's the personalities that exist only for one experience that we would call a lifetime. But the generating force, the nefesh and the ruach, that just goes on, goes on goes into the relatives, just goes, goes on. It's been here since before the fall. In Christ Jesus, well, let me say the Lord Jesus Christ has the strength to enable us to continue. So the personalities that exist at the time that 
the Lord Jesus takes possession of his possession, which is the kingdom, those personalities will become permanent. And the nephesh and the, and the ruach of the vessel, which are criminal at this point, as well as fallen Adam, I wasn't planning on preaching this this morning, as well as the elements of fallen Adam that have joined with the nephesh and the ruach to produce the kind of personalities we see today. They must bend their knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the, the, the elements of the fallen Adam that's joined with the vessel, that's the spiritual intercourse, to produce the personalities of today, they're criminal. And the, and the Lord Jesus, he is the last Adam. So it's the last Adam bringing the first Adam into submission. Brethren, that's you and me, okay? That's Christ and you and me bringing our fallen nature into submission. It was all of Adam who became evil has to be returned to righteousness. So anyway, how in the world did I get on that? I was talking about this Lucifer. It's everywhere for anybody to see. And it's all through the United Nations. It's, it's, it's obvious. And the people just... So Glenn stood there and he said, Doesn't, am I the only one who sees this? Satan's appearing in human beings, and their goal is to bring down the government that Jesus Christ raised up and to possess all of the people that Jesus Christ now has a relationship with and kill us. This is just the beginning. Don't you get it? No, they don't get it. They don't get it. The people in the church don't get it. The pastors don't believe it. Russia's calling these people evil. Who are these people? The people in power. I don't know that he came right out and said Obama was evil. That may even be a crime. I, I don't really know. It shouldn't be a crime. We have free speech. And I, I don't know. I don't think he said Obama's evil, but he's talking about the people in the Congress, the people in the, in the judiciary. This is, these, this is not politics, as usual. These people are evil. People that look right in your face and lie to you. That congressman from California that was booed at, that was booed in his town meeting, the look on his face when his constituents said to him that they were concerned that our government will now not prosecute any, um, will not, I don't know, how do they say it? Black people that commit crimes. Our, our Attorney General of the United States will not prosecute them. Well, the man stood there and talk about condescension. I don't know what I would have done if I could have gotten my hands on him, you know? And he just stood there. Now, I really think that he didn't hear about this. These people in Congress, they don't even listen to the news. That there is a man who was an attorney on the staff of the United States Attorney General that has just resigned his office in protest of the release of two black men who was standing in front of a polling place with a club threatening white people that wanted to go in and vote. That is a crime in this country. And they were convicted. And before they could be sentenced, the word went down to let them go. This man resigned his position as attorney in the United States Justice Department and has testified before the, I think the correct name is the Civil Rights Commission of the United States, under oath, 
saying that there is a policy in Holder's Justice Department to not prosecute black criminals. So the people were, were whatever they were asking, the, I, I don't know how the question started, maybe what are you doing about it or what do you think about it? And he stood there with this look on his face saying, well, I don't, you nice children, you know, I don't believe that, that there's such a policy in the Justice Department. And, and I don't know what you read on the internet, but, but no black criminals have been let go. You know. And they boo him because the man, attorney, just testified before the Civil Rights Commission under oath swearing on a Bible that this is what happened. And we know for a fact that they were let go. They will let go. The only question is why. The condescension. Oh, I don't, you silly children, what you saw on the internet, I don't know. So eventually he found out, someone told him, the staff, I guess, what I just told you. And his, his, his um, comment to the press was, well, the newspapers that he reads didn't run the story. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> But it was in the Wall Street Journal. Don't you read the Wall Street Journal? What newspapers are you reading? So now we're waiting to see what he's going to do about it. You're a congressman. Are you going to call for an investigation? But the condescension on it. They're completely detached from the people who elect them. Thinking we're children. This is this mentality. Brethren, you know, years ago, I read in the scripture uh, uh, um, verses such as this. And the people made Jeroboam king. And the people made so and so king. And I said to the Lord, I've asked the Lord several times, what does it mean? And the people made so and so king. I don't understand that. How did they do it? You know, did they vote or? Well, no, what, what do you mean the people made so and so came? And today I understand. However, it came to pass, you can't be a king of, of Israel unless the people uh, uh, want you as their king. In God's government, there's no tyranny. So somehow the people made it known that they, well, Jeroboam. It says, whoever the leaders of the people were went and called him back, he was out of the country. So the way that, the way that principle in the scripture is manifesting today is that God has given us a government where the people vote. The power does not come from the government upon the people. It comes up from the people to the ones that we elect to run the government, which is supposed to be a minimum. minimum minimal size. So this government has turned the tables of, of, this, of what this country has always been. And it's not just a tyranny. It's not just a tyranny with a club or a gun. It's a tyranny of the mind. Saying people, well, you know, what do you know? Did you go to Harvard? I want to tell you that I've met people with no education at all that have a strong sense of right and wrong, that are a good judge of people. And do you know how the social sciences got started in this country or in the world? It rises out of Marxism. All of these social sciences that these people in leadership position that think they're so smart that they're going to tell us how to live, it's all has communist roots. So, brethren, it cannot be much longer before the final confrontation. Because the people of this country are rising up. And Glenn was saying, he, he, was, he said, we can't win. He's saying, he, he wasn't as explicit as I am, but this is what he was saying. There's no hope unless God helps us. That's Satan, that these people are manifestations of Satan. And he was saying, stand with God, he'll help us. Stand with God, he'll help us. 
to stay with God, he'll help us. And there's no help apart from him. A Mormon on a political station is the only one that's preaching the truth. So it's the final conflict, brethren. How exciting. But there will be people getting hurt. I'm sorry about that. It's the culmination, the end of the ages, the final conflict between the fallen Adam who was possessing the vessels that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's insane. The fallen Adam is insane. And he's fighting with himself, the part of him that's not insane, the part of him that's, that's reconnected to God. He sinned and he fell down and he became insane. He became Darth Vader. <coughs> Who knows what we are about to see? See, God does nothing <coughs> unless he tells his prophets. And his prophet is Glenn Beck. And this is the most explicit expose of what's going on that I've ever heard him say. It's not any one person. It is Lucifer, which is the fallen Adam. Lucifer is the fallen Adam. And his mind, the mind of the fallen Adam, is Satan and Leviathan and Cain. And the whole mess together, the calling of the serpent. So that's what I want you to share with you all. That Glenn Beck actually said that on TV last night. Mm -hmm. And thank God for Rudolph Murdoch, who refuses to take him off the air. Thank God. We just pray for his safety, for the safety of himself and his family. How much time could be left for him? How is this going to manifest? I'll tell you this, I'm not prophesying to you, because I don't know, but in general principle, this is what I believe. Satan always shows himself before Christ, you should all know that, Christ always comes in the last name. The, full, the fullness of the evil that we're dealing with has to be exposed as a last ditch effort for people to open their eyes and cry out to God, because the people who don't cry out to God will probably be destroyed. Probably. Is it God that's destroying them? Does he want them to die because they rejected him? Don't be ridiculous, will you? Please stop being ridiculous. These people preaching this, someday they're going to realize how ridiculous they are and they're going to be embarrassed. There will be a satanic manifestation that cannot be denied. Where is it going to come from? I, I did think at one point that Obama was the Antichrist, but so many people were saying no, and I knew that I wasn't hearing from God, that it was just me, so I sort of went. And maybe he's not the Antichrist, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The Gerald Flurry, that whole organization that, that succeeded her belongs to him, they insist it's going to be a European, and that in particular a German. But I don't know. When I look around, I see all the action happening over here. Although I'm not. I just realized I haven't gotten the. Um, I haven't gotten the trumpet for the last couple of weeks. I wonder if I lost my subscription somehow. Check that out. I usually get one a week. Uh, I'm not that up on what's going on in Europe. My, basically, my contact is through the trumpet, which I now realize I haven't received in a couple of weeks. So, of course, I'm telling you, this isn't God. This is just me. I can easily be wrong. You know? But I, well, I see what's happening here. And also, if you put it together with what Glenn is exposing, which we've known, uh, I've known about this, but. I, I was not, I've known about, um, about Lucis, the Lucis Trust, and Lucifer being involved in the United Nations, but I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know that it came from a man called Solomonsky, 
that wrote a book telling people how to overthrow our government and dedicating that book to Lucifer as a great, great man. I didn't know that. I wondered where it all came from, but I didn't know that. So I see it all happening here. And I've told, I don't know if I ever preached it or I just told some of you, sometimes I get into conversations with you all, that I see this conflict of the ages. It's in Israel. The conflict is in Israel. Now that's the Israel of God. So that's the, the 12 tribes, wherever they may be. I think the majority of the, majority of the, of the 10 missing tribes are, are, res are reincarnated in, in the church today. That's my opinion. The conflict is in Israel. I just described it to you. It's, it's, it's like a cancer in a human body. It's when a, when a cancer or any autoimmune disease appears in, in a human being. What that is, is the person's own body trying to destroy, trying to kill the person. It's a, it's a form of suicide. One's own body has produced an enemy that's trying to kill its host. So Israel is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the body. It's the many-membered body that God is appearing in. So the battle is over his body. That's what I said when I first started talking to him. He wants his body back. And the cancer is in Israel. Cancer's in Israel. And it's also, I, I think the main, the main cancer is in Israel, but it goes beyond. Because the Arabs are the offspring of Ishmael. I, I, I believe they're going, the Lord's going to take them. There's, they're not the promised seed, but they're the offspring of Abraham. And Egypt, we're told, Egypt and Assyria are going to be saved. There's many, there must be many seeds of Joseph in Egypt. However the intermarriage went, that blood is all through Egypt. And Assyria, Assyria is Iran and Iraq. And Iran is not, uh, the, the inhabitants of Iran are not Arabs, in case you don't know that. They're Indian. Their roots are Indian. They're not Arabs. But Iraq, I, th I think the Iraqis are Arabs. It's all about Israel. God's body and the cancer is in Israel. But of course, Europe, a lot of people say that the, the, inhab the Europeans are the, the descendants of the Ten Lost Tribes. So uh, We'll see what happens in Europe, but right now I see what's happening here. It's alarming and it's exciting. So we're going to see, I believe, a visible demonic manifestation. And you know who preaches that? Rabbi Barzada, I've heard him preach that. There is going to be a visible, demonic appearance. They're going to appear. The demons are going to appear. Now, I don't know whether, well, Rabbi Barzadok says they're going to be demons, no, not, not humans. I don't know about that. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know whether they'll be demons or just these people that are evil, and there are evil people out there, people that, Brethren, if, if you do these things, I'm not saying that you're evil, but you have the evil inclination, you know, living through you. What is evil? Lying right to someone's face. Manipulating people, relating to people in a way that you manipulate them to get what you want. That's evil. And it's witchcraft. And I'm not saying you're evil, but evil is in all of us. And it's our responsibility to, for the, our personality to cleave to the righteous one in us and defeat our evil side. Otherwise, you're guilty of doing evil. See? Now, you, 
may not think you're doing evil or intend to do evil, but but if after tasting of the good word of God and the miracles of the world to come, you're still letting your evil soy do that through you, you're guilty, you know? So what are the consequences going to be? I don't know. Would you please stop, stop doing it, please? Come on, get your old man, get him by the throat. No, don't, don't let him do wrong things through you. So that's what I, I believe, that, that there, is, there is actually going to be a warfare between the human beings that are the sons of the serpent and the sons of God in, in full stature. I mean, it can't be now. Almost everybody, everybody in this ministry here in New York anyway, we're all sick. I don't know about, no, you and Margie are the only, you're not sick. No. All of us old people. Well, <laughs> Everybody's got something here, except the two young chickens and, uh, and, uh, and Brooke. <laughs> Brooke is still here. <laughs> here in New York, anyway. A lot of us have, have health issues. I mean, it's just not, it's just absolutely not possible. Just not possible in our present condition. So you better all get ready, because there's a war coming, and there has to be a catching up. It has to be. Unless it's somebody else and not us, I guess that's always a possibility. But the reason I don't think so is that I don't know anybody else that's preaching this, but they could be out there hidden somewhere. I mean, you never know. But there's enough evidence that it's us that I can tell you, you really better get before God and ask if there's anything he needs you to do to prepare yourself for this. Because, brethren, whoever the people are in whom Christ is going to stand up, you need to know that, there, and it's going to be a small handful of people, it's going to be a handful of people. You need to know whoever they are, they're going to be the only hope of the people who are going to be in a lot of trouble. And the only hope of the country and the only hope of the world. What Christ does through them. And he's, and he's limited as to what he can do by our obedience. Now, that doesn't mean we would choose to be disobedient. It means if we don't have a clue of what he's telling us to do, or if we're not listening for his instructions, we could miss it because of our fallen nature. Everybody wants to do the right thing. We all want to do the right thing. Want to. So, Lord, brethren, I, I've been, the Lord, the Lord has, I had a relationship with me for over 30 years now, and um, this is my experience. Before he destroys sin, he fully, fully exposes it. And I fully, fully believe there was there were going to be demons walking down the street. Now, whether they're demons with human faces or not, I don't know. But it has to be severe enough for the country to wake up, for all the nominal Christians to wake up and stop looking for their blessing and start putting on their armor and picking up their spiritual weapons. So I'm just repeating what Glenn Beck said. Stand with God, he'll save us. He's going to save us through the manifestation of his sons. Stand with God and he'll save us. Brethren, the Lord just prophesied the war through Fox News. Do you hear what I'm telling you? How much longer could we have? <coughs> so, is it going to blow up here in the Middle East and in Europe at the same time? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And, and I, I'll just, I'll say, just say one last thing. I don't, I, I don't think anybody here has this problem with it. I'm not preaching at anybody personally. Brethren, your priorities must be God, the assignment he gives you to other people and your family. You cannot put your natural family ahead of an assignment that God gives you. You know what I'm saying? You have
have to believe if he gives you an assignment to someone who's not your physical blood, you have to believe he's going to take care of your physical blood. Maybe you're the only one who could do that, what he sends you to do. And there are five people that could take care of your son and you do it. To be very careful about that. Mm -hmm. You have to trust him. Mm -hmm. If he's giving you an assignment to someone that's not in your family, that he's going to send someone to take care of your family. That he knows what he's doing. Okay, brethren. I don't really think there's any prayer to pray. This conflict of the ages must happen. We're not going to pray to stop it. So we're, we're being set up for race riots and martial law. I don't know. that were all those years ago, two years of martial laws scared me half to death. But I, I don't know, that was a long time ago. But being set up, there are people with, with charisma and positions of power that are deliberately stoking up race riots. Uh, they're trying to start race riots in the heat of the summer so that they can uh, lock us all down and confiscate weapons that people have what they're doing. And they want to do it before the November elections. They're trying to do it before the November elections to even possibly stop the elections. We do review that. But it's beyond anything that we can do. It's in God's hands. Because they grab the power. <laughs> They've got the three branches of government plus the press, which is really a fourth branch of government. It's a fourth check or balance. They've got the four branches of, of checks and balances. It's amazing. Completely amazing. And I want you to know that part of the plan was to corrupt the people morally and to corrupt the people sexually. And they've done it. They've, of course, I'm not saying every human being, but the sexual corruption, that's, it's through the whole Western world. You know? Nothing, there are, there's no more morality. Anything goes. Anything goes. Every prohibition in the Bible is being advertised as okay. So, look forward to this exciting conflict between the two, these two uh, powerful spiritual forces and every human being has to be aligned with one or the other. If you don't choose the Lord Jesus, you will be aligned with the other side. Not because you've rejected Jesus, but simply because the rule is that it's not even a rule. The reality is, excuse me, that this whole world, is, humanity, is presently possessed by the serpent's family. So to be a part of the family of, of Jesus, you have to choose him and lay hold of him. If you don't reach out and choose him and lay hold of him, your natural state is that you're a member of the serpent's family. That's who we are. We have to make an active choice to be something other than what we are. Or we become a part of the collective mass of people of the serpent's household. Because that's really who we are. So a lot of people will be getting hurt. And remember the serpent punishes his own, her own. She treats her, her houses badly. can't be much longer. can't be much longer. It may be before November. Maybe. They're trying to stop the elections. And they're using race. And 
Jesse Jackson and Reverend Sharpton. Where are they? These, these black leaders selling these people down the river. You know, there was a, I'm sorry, I'm not good with names. There was a black, uh, I think he was a basketball player. He's an, an athlete. I may have the wrong ball. <laughs> Is that, he just moved. I think, it, I may have this whole thing. I think he just moved out of New York State. He changed teams. I think he changed teams. And, um, I wish I had this straight, but the bottom line is that um, the, the man who owns the team, maybe he sold him. You know, they sell athletes. Maybe the man who owned the team sold him. I'm not sure. But in any event, this man is a millionaire, probably a multi-millionaire, because these athletes make a lot of money. And uh, Jesse Jackson accused the team owner of treating him like he was a slave. It was, I mean, every, but it was a totally bizarre statement to make. The man's a millionaire. He's <laughs> a millionaire athlete. Went to another team. I'm sorry that I don't remember. I, I never got the exact details straight. It's not that I don't remember them. And Jesse Jackson said he's being treated like a slave. What kind of nonsense is that? What kind of a thing is that to say? So these are black leaders that hate their own constituents. And there's Michelle Obama standing up there speaking at the NAACP, saying how our schools are still crumbling. She was talking about the inner city schools. Well, one of Barack Obama's first acts as president was to shut down the charter schools in Washington, D.C. that were giving the black inner city children a chance to get a decent education. Why would he do that? Because the charter schools, the whole concept of charter schools, weaken the teachers' union. If enough children go to the charter schools, there'll be less, less needs for teachers. It's good for the children in charter schools. It's not good for the teachers. So the first thing he did when he got into office was sell out all of those inner-city children as a payoff to the unions. And his wife is up there talking about the crumbling schools. The whole body's corrupt. From the top of its head to the bottom of its toes, filled with spiritual sores. And it's coming to a head. So stand with God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's going to be exciting to see. So our government has become thorough to the people of this nation and whoever else is affected by this nation. God is about to deal with Pharaoh in a manner similar or of the same degree of power that was manifested when he brought the Hebrew children there of Israel. And the signs will be so great, many will acknowledge you. It has nothing to do with, if you don't, it has nothing to do with your rejection of him. That is so silly. You reject God so he punishes you <coughs> and forever. What kind of a thing is that to say about God? Okay, brethren, I want to take a, what time is it? Uh, it's a little early, but let's take a, a break because they, okay. I do want to get back to this gated reward, uh, embodied or embodied. It's uh, 10 minutes. Let's make it 10 minutes. Okay.